Hey there, welcome back to the channel. To those who are new to the channel, my name is Bonnie Odin. Today, we are diving into one of the most incredible animation techniques for creating stunning orbit. But before that, I have a story to tell. So the crazy thing happened to me yesterday while shooting this video. My camera died without any reason. <laughs> A day before I planned to use it, I used it flawlessly and stored it safely without any cause of damage. However, the next morning when I tried to turn it on to record this video, it wouldn't turn on. Bruh, I did nearly everything I could to cleaning it, removing the battery, inserting the spare one, and still, now I wonder. Did I accidentally sleepwalk into my camera and damage it? No way. I mean, no freaking way because I will remember that and there will be a visible sign of damage if that were the case. Now I'm confused and my heart is broken into pieces and I don't even have appetite for food. Cause I had spent a whole lot of money into this camera and only had it for two years. I went to sleep with a broken heart last night. This morning, I got up and checked it once more. Finally, I discovered the issue. It was an SD card. Soon as I replaced the SD card with the formatted one, it worked flawlessly. Bruh. Thank God, lesson learned. Always remember to format your SD card after using it. But anyway, without any waste of time, let's dive right into the video. First, we need a central object. This could be anything. I'll use a simple circle by pressing shift, drawing the circle. Make sure it has a wide stroke with the weight of five. Now that our central object is ready, let's create the revolving object. Quickly duplicate this shape by pressing Ctrl D, press S to scale it down and move it to the side. Center its anchor point by going to layer, transform, center the anchor point. To make sure your circle is centered, go to window, Align, use this, align. Adding a revolutionary is super straightforward. Start by adding the null object to your stack by right clicking new null object. Next, make sure all the layers are 3D except the background. Now let's dive into the animation. Head to the transform property of the null object. Alt, click the stopwatch next to the Y rotation. Type in time, asterisk 200. Finally, parent your revolving object to the null object by using this picker whip. Then select the revolving object, go to layer, transform, auto orient, orient towards camera. Click OK. Now let's see how it's looking. Now that's looking good. Let's jazz it up by showing the orbital path. Create a circle with only the stroke enable. Enter its anchor point. Name it the orbital path. Next, make sure the orbital ring is 3D and rotate its X rotation by 90 degree. Now you can see it. Add another null object. Right click, layer, null object. Select the orbital path and the old null object, parent it to the new null object. Make the new null object 3D, go to transform, rotate its X rotation, go to the Z rotation, Alt, click the stopwatch, time, asterisk 20. That's how it's looking. But you might notice the orbital path is popping out in front of the circle. To fix that, go to the math orbital path, select the revolving object, Click here to invert the math. Now you can see the revolving object. Enable the revolving object. Bingo. Here we go. It's super duper nice. To take this even further, you can add noise. Go to new layer. Add adjustment layer. Go to effect and presets. Type in noise. Drag and drop the noise on, onto the adjustment layer. Raise the amount to your liking. I'm just going to raise it to 30. And there you have it. Now that we've covered the basics, we can jump into our advanced designs. All right. On to our next orbiting scene. This time we're focusing on the lighting and turning an image into a 3D object. First we need a cool background with a light pattern. Go ahead and add a new solid layer. Name it background. Now let's create that light pattern. Add the gradient ramp to your background. Type in gradient, then add it to your background. Place the light source to stimulate the light source in the top right. Choose two shades of the same color. I'll choose blue. Click OK. Great. Now add another solid layer for your main circle and apply the gradient ramp effect again. Feel free to pick whatever color you like, but I'm just gonna leave it to this one. Apply the CC sphere effect, which gives us a nice technical 3D sphere. Use the light parameter to adjust the light intensity. Uh, I'm just gonna type in the light 
the light intensity 200, then set the light height to negative 50. Now set the light direction from the light source direction. Head over to shade, set the specular to 100, uh, the roughness to 0.4, reflective to 13. Now I'll add the glow effect. Go back to the effect and presets, then type in glow. Drag and drop it to the sphere circle. Change the glow based on alpha channel. Now set the glow radius to 20, glow intensity to 0.2, glow color to A and B, color looping to sawtooth, B and A. Then duplicate the glow radius. Now set the radius to 1, 150. Choose the darker area than the one you have and click OK. Now duplicate the sphere by pressing Ctrl D, scale it down and drag it to the side. And now add the null object on top of your stacks. Turn on the 3D layer to both the spheres and the null object. Go to transform. I'll click the stopwatch of the Y rotation. Time, asterisk 200. Select both of the spheres, go to layer, transform, auto orient, orient towards camera. And now it's time to parent the revolving sphere to the null object. And here you have it. Now it's time to create the flow for cast shadows. Go ahead and create another solid layer with the width of 4000 and the height of 4000. Go to effect and presets, apply the radio waves effect, drag and drop it to your solid layer. Make the layer 3D, then rotate its X rotation by 90 degrees. Then position it underneath the sphere. From here, create the camera, then use the camera tool to angle it down onto the scene. Great. Don't forget to change the color to white. It's looking good so far. Now adjust the radio wave settings. Adjust the frequency to 3. Lifespan to 20. And you got it. Now let's create the point light. Go back to layer new. Light. Change the type to point. Make sure cast shadows are on. And don't forget to increase the shadow diffusion. Click OK. Make sure cast shadows are on on both the sphere. Go back to the sphere. Material. Change cast shadows to on. And there you have it. Looking good. But wait. You can see the shadows are facing the wrong direction. To fix that, drag and drop this point light to the top right. As you can see, like the shadows start to be on the right direction now from the light source. Now it's looking good. As always, subscribe to the channel if you want to be the best and always be creating. Leave a comment below if you found this helpful and what you want to learn next. Thank you for watching and happy animation.